Well, I was down underneath my car trying to uh, get this plate on just on the uh, bottom of the engine and I've been missing my 12 mil. Let me show you where it is. I was just down here and looked up. There it is, hanging on my on my header. There you been. The sun's blinding. Oh, I can't see. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Our last video was actually the fuel lines. Now, they're done. However, they're not quite done. I'm, I'm actually filming before we finish the entire install. So you're gonna notice there's no fuel lines in here, but they are on the ground right there. They're drying out. I just put water through them and brake clean. So uh, I'm not really in a rush obviously to install them as of yet. So I'm not going to put them on and then risk the chance of having water getting into the system. But I figured for today, we can go ahead and start getting our AOS installed. Now I ended up going with the IAG version three street series AOS. If I can hold it, as you can see, hoses are all over the place. As you can see, that's it right there. Um, and I went with the street series. Now, that was great and all. Now let me explain some things. So yes, I got the Street Series one, that's fine. Obviously, if you have a stock STI or a WRX, it's probably a good idea to get the Street Series one. I got it and then I started building the engine and you know I started getting rid of things that are like emissions based and I regretted getting it. I wish I got the competition one. Well, I believe right now you can't even buy a competition one anymore and um, you can only get the conversion kit, so. I found a guy locally that was selling it. Um, so this is pretty much it. It basically just comes with like the fitting on top, which is literally just replaces that to that. Um, the guy locally didn't have, he didn't have the vacuum cap. So I went to Canadian Tire and bought a pack of these. It was like five bucks, uh, but he did have the one inch diameter hose. And there's also a plug that you need to get. I have it somewhere where it is. I don't know, but I do have the plug somewhere. It's like a, a quarter inch plug. Um, I'll show you that later on whenever I find it, but it ends up going in the back of your throttle body. It goes right there where that broken uh, vacuum hose is right there. So that's where that goes. If, you're, if your manifold's not in the car, you gotta unbolt your throttle body to access it. But since obviously mine's not in the car, I can just unhook it right there. Stay here and pretend I know what I'm doing and I'll be straight up with you guys. I really don't know. <sighs> I am just gonna be following a guide that I found online. Uh, IG has one that's very easy to follow and hopefully I can kind of help make a clearer image as to where you're running these hoses. Now, there's not a lot of competition series ones out there, so hopefully this is a decent video for your competition series ones. Um, but again, this was a street series kit that I'm converting to competition, so in the end of the day, it should be a comp AOS. Yeah. I don't really have a lot of time either right now to get it installed. Really my plan for today is to get this thing thrown in the car, get it all mounted up, and I don't know, just clean up some stuff and get it ready for all the hoses. Uh, I'm probably not gonna show exactly how to install the hoses as I'm going. I'm probably gonna install stuff first and then show you where everything runs. I feel like it'd be easier to do that rather than to explain where everything goes as I'm doing it. So that's probably what I'm gonna do and I'm probably not gonna install the hoses until the manifold is on again. So yeah, we gotta get the fueling done first. I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this thing attached. Inside of here, there should be brackets for everything. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's in there. So I'm gonna take this all apart, figure out what I gotta do and let's get this thing going. I found the cap, that's it right there. Uh, there's no sealant on it. I have some sealant I use for my cylinder for cooling mod. I'm gonna throw it on there as well. Should do the trick. This is what we're looking for right here. So this is gonna mount on the back, something like this, I believe. I just need to double check, but I'm pretty sure it's like this. And then this mounts to the inside of your car. So before I start, obviously I wanna point out my car is all apart still. Yours is probably gonna be all together. I mean, I'm gonna to try to hopefully film this so you guys can get an idea, even if your car was together, of how to do this. Uh, but basically where we're gonna start off is the engine harness over there. So pretty much, assuming your engine harness is disconnected, uh, there's some tape down here that we're gonna have to cut off. So just be careful, slice that tape, and then you can uncoil it, as well as right here, same thing, cut the tape, uncoil it. We might be moving this connector, I don't really remember. Yeah, obviously you're gonna have to get your card at this point in order to do what I'm doing. 
Uh, also, your brake line's back here. You're gonna wanna push them back against the firewall, but gently, you don't wanna break anything. If you push too hard, you could break these. And you're gonna have one, you know, you're gonna have a good time. So careful, don't do that. Just push it gently. Uh, these upper ones, I think you're okay. I don't think you have to touch them. Hopefully we don't have to. If anything, we might just have to pull them back a bit, but I'm gonna leave them as is for now. I'm just gonna push those back and then we'll see our clearance once we get the AOS in. I was thinking I might have had to take the O-ring here, but it looks like this one also comes with the O-ring. So this should be able to go right on. You're also gonna notice there's a bunch of holes here, so there's a lot of customization you could do with this port. You can have it literally going any direction you want. I'm gonna have it going straight out to the side just because it makes the most sense for my application. You guys can adjust it whichever way you need. And that's actually really long. Is there not shorter ones? That might be a problem. It came with hardware after all. Let's go ahead and use those. So this is your old uh, engine harness bracket. This is where AOS ended up being installed. So you're no longer going to be using this. You can go ahead, take it off, use a fly head on this clip, and it should just slide out. Yeah, definitely do this inside the car. Uh, there's a tab right there you got to kind of pull up on. I had to put it in the vise because I just couldn't get a good grip. But once you have that tab pulled up, you can start pulling. <sighs> And it comes out. You no longer need this bracket, but it's probably a lot easier to pull it out when it's inside the car. So the bracket we got rid of is getting replaced by this right here. Basically remove that 10 mil right there that goes to your uh, power steering line bracket. Uh, and essentially it's gonna be bolted in right there. Now what's gonna happen is your engine harness is gonna end up hooking up. It's gonna hook up around here somewhere Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate this yet because I don't have my manifold in yet with my other half of the engine harness that hooks into this, but you're going to hook it into there, bend it down where you need to, and then that will be done. So I realized two things. I've got the drain hose that goes down here. Uh, there's a little port there, and I'm going to have to take this off. So while I take that off, I noticed that, first of all, IAG's R&D is really good. Look, they like notched this part out perfectly for right there. Um, I think I could go up one more hole. So I'm going to go up one more hole and then see if I still clear that. I should. It'll be close, but I should. I'm going to go ahead, raise this up one more notch, and then put that drainage hose on there. Five minutes later. I put the drainage hose back on. Also move the AOS up one more notch. It's, you can't really tell, but I did move it up a little bit more. Yeah, it used to be two holes on the top and two holes on the bottom. Now there's three on top and one on the bottom. Can't really tell, but I believe that's how it is. Uh, it's nice and tight up here now, so... You know, utilizing more space. Also, I kind of prefer having a little bit higher because, you know, with drainage, you want everything to flow down. If you have stuff flowing up when draining, it doesn't drain very well. Now, I don't really want to cut any hoses until I have my manifold in because I want to make sure everything is ran correctly. Like, I'm sure I could go and start plumbing stuff. I just don't want to do it yet until I know everything is in the correct place. We can go ahead. We could put the fitting here back. And we can also plug up that manifold. So this is a view you're probably not going to see, obviously, if your manifold is in your car. Uh, but basically to access this, if it is in your car, you got to pop off your throttle body and then you can unscrew this. This is just a vacuum line from my understanding. Mine snapped, but thankfully, since I'm running the competition AOS, I don't need it. So I'm just going to use an adjustable to help take this off. There we go. It took a little bit of effort, but it's broken free. This is your plug. I believe it's a quarter inch. Normally when you get the competition conversion kit, there's gonna be red sealant on it. Obviously mine didn't come with it. I had to order one separately. So I'm, I'm gonna use some of this Loctite stuff. It's five, six, seven, whatever. It's thread sealant. It's meant for hydraulic lines. So I'm sure this will do the trick. If a hydraulic line could stay steel with this, I'm sure. This will seal 
a Subaru. That should be it. Let that sit for a while. By the time I get my car running again, it should be more than dry. Well, guys, I ran out of time. I, I, it's 8 o'clock now. It's getting dark. I got about an hour drive to get back home. Uh, it's in. That's pretty much it. I don't really want to run any hoses until I have like the intake manifold in. So be right back. Hopefully, we got a fuel system installed when I get back to you guys. All right, guys, I'm back. It's been a week. You're going to notice the engine is a little bit different than what it was from when I last recorded. That's okay. Uh, but I got to put the intake manifold on. So let's go ahead and replace a part for the install. That's going to be a lot easier to do without the intake manifold on. And basically, it's this breather section right here. I'll show you where it goes. This is where it kind of is right here. Uh, this entire thing gets replaced. You're going to take off your white PCV. And then you're going to replace it with basically like this and this and a couple clamps. And basically your return goes to this from that AOS and that's your return line right there. So I'm going to do that quick, get it thrown in, and then we can get the intake manifold on. So I went ahead, connected this breather port right here. Uh, these clips, by the way, are really difficult to do. So I wanted to do this before I got the intake manifold on just because I had a lot more room. The drain hose, I put the 16 inch uh, fire, like heat shroud thing on, uh, zip tied it, made in, making sure that there was a nice downward slope to it. IEG recommends to run it through here, but it's gonna get tight when you go to put on your coupler for your uh, turbo. So I, they, I've also seen people do it like this. And this is your transmission drain hose. So I just kind of ran it through here and out. It should be fine. It shouldn't cause any problems. Um, we're not gonna have another hose coming into the intake manifold around here because obviously we're going to competition one. I'll be back when we got an intake manifold on. So to start it off, these white connectors, take them right off. You can pull them off, just put them back to where they came from. So this one's here to there, there to there. And then this one right here goes to like down here, I believe it is. Yeah, down to here. Uh, and then on this side, you remove this fitting, which originally went into here. Uh, you got to pull it out. But it's very difficult to do because there's like a metal coupler. I cut mine with a Dremel if it focuses. I cut mine and split it with a screwdriver. Now I can take it out. Unplug this connector by shoving a screwdriver. I think it was from this side. From this side, I shoved a screwdriver. It popped it open. Uh, it's going to go into this connector right here, which is blue. And obviously this part right here goes into there. So this goes into there. And then this side goes with that one. I also wanted to put stuff back on just to kind of help give you guys an idea as to what's going on. Uh, I just threw on the uh, coolant overflow tank or whatever you call it. It's for the turbo, I'm pretty sure. Um, I put it on just so you guys can get an idea of what's going on. Because, like, I got to remove this hose now. It used to go to the turbo. Uh, what's going to happen is one of these hoses are going to end up going to the turbo. And then another one will go back into here. So, this will have to come off. That's okay. And other than, yeah, I put, like, the white PVC sensor cap things on all of the parts. And that black one right there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit, I've never done this before. I kind of have an idea as to what to do. Uh, I just find it's going to be a lot more easier for me if I just do the mod for this and then show you guys what I've done afterwards. So I'm going to throw you guys on a time lapse. I'm going to bang this out. Got my laptop right there showing me what to do. <sighs> Let's get her done.
is what I ended up removing. Uh, you might have been able to pull it out without cutting it. I decided to cut it and I maybe could have got away without doing it. Uh, this is basically everything I removed. If you don't need it in the car, I'd rather have it out. So I did also remove that little metal piece right there. I pulled it out with some needle nose pliers and basically shoved it in that connector. You can see the outline of the metal part right here. Uh, now this can just go away. You can just tuck it down there, forget about it. And now you got lots of room. Uh, also had to cap that off because we got rid of the whole section. Otherwise that cap would have went on right here. And obviously you can do that if you choose to, but I'd rather have it gone because I want this whole area cleaned up. Uh, another cap you got to do is back here. And after you do that cap, you're pretty much done. That is the competition AOS. Um, I did find it difficult running that back uh, venting hose. It's because I have a cob catted downpipe and I'm a little worried about how close it is to the downpipe. But this is how this is how IAG kind of has it ran. You can't even see it, but it's it's kind of close. I mean, it's probably okay. I wouldn't mind if they included some of that heating shield stuff for this, but they didn't. Oh, and I got to put a couple zip ties. But for the most part, guys, that is the install. It is pretty well done. Your two bottom hoses that come up, basically one runs up to the top here, and the other one. Uh, you can kind of see it. I have it running down here. It shoots up. This is it right here Kind of comes in under all underneath this and then ends up to your uh, coolant line on your turbo So the coolant lines on these also use a thicker bracket like it's much beefier here and here I guess because it's hot It needs that extra bit of grip and then your bottom return hose just kind of goes across Comes down and then goes into that Y fitting down there the middle one comes down and across and shoots down into that Y fitting that this return also goes to. Uh, and then that one I believe uses a 16 inch uh, heat shield as well. The next one comes down into this hole as well as with this one. This one uses the 12 inch uh, shield, comes up across into here. Your one inch breather hose, that's the one that goes to atmosphere. This one just kind of shoots down across and beside your uh, downpipe. I'll get you guys a, a view down there in a second. That is pretty much it. This is pretty much the install. It's, it's really not that hard. It's a lot easier than I thought. Uh, it also cleans up the engine bay a bit, which I do like as well. Uh, but at this point, you would go ahead and put your car back together, put the intercooler back on and throw coolant in here and bleed it. You wanna make sure this is your highest point of your car. So all the air bubbles come out. You also have your breather cap right there. You open up that when you're bleeding the system, some coolant might come out of there, but nothing crazy. And that's pretty much it, guys. So the one inch tube, you can see it. Uh, so this is our downpipe on the right. That's the tube. It comes down, across, comes down, 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 underneath this mount. And it comes out of this kind of like shield where your resonator is. It shoots down there. I put a zip tie, hold it in place. I think that will be just fine. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm a little out of it today. Like... My, my mind like I can't focus or talk right. Hopefully this video is decent to watch. We're almost done We just got to do the electronic boost controller put the top mount back on bleed the coolant And that's it. We're rocking. Oh, and in the intake. We also got to do an intake uh, but That's pretty simple. I'll catch you guys in the next video Please feel free to like comment and subscribe and take it easy